Ben Kerr, the artist here, and welcome back to another Ben 10 Breakdown. This is part two to my Secret of the Omnitrix Breakdown, so if you have yet to see part one, a link will be down below. But before we continue on to part two, I have two really quick updates. Thanks to Roxy and Runny from the Ben 10 Prime Discord server, I now have high quality access to the Accelerate and iGuy versions of the film. Okay, animal. Science class is cancelled. Roxy was able to confirm for me that yes, the flashbacks later in the film are updated to the appropriate versions. Although the scenes with new animation for Heat Blast did not have new animation for Eye Guy or Accelerate, but reused scenes from the beginning of the movie. Tara also re-recorded her line here when the Eye Guy and Accelerate versions are used. Good thing I was Heat Blast, cause that DNA wave would have scrambled me. But according to other members from the Ink Tank Discord server, these lines were not redubbed internationally in the alternate versions, so Ben will all always call the alien Heat Blast in the dubs. As for if I'm going to break down these alternative versions, well, it is possible, but probably not for another week or two as my to-do list is starting to stack up again. But I am having some editing fun comparing the footage now that I could use it. If I can't shut it down, I'll just have to turn it up. Anyways, let's get back to the breakdown. We last left the gang in the asteroid belt of Xenon being attacked by Vilgax in 6-6. Ben, in a stray pod, is trying to fight his way off of the drones back to the ship, while Tetrax and Myax are trying to release Vilgax's anchor. If we don't clear those tethers, both ships will be destroyed and re-entry. It's usually blacked out, but does Vilgax have some sort of zipper going up the front of him? The husk of Gluto. Gluto versus Vilgax. <laughs> These new drones must have came with the new ship too. You know, something like this would be great for a drummer that plays double bass. It's gotta be scary, because if you stop stomping, you're just gonna crash right into the wall, so you gotta stomp as fast as you're flying. Kinda of funny seeing my axe wearing a spacesuit, although hers has a different helmet shape too. 6 has been through a lot, so these blasts from this ship being enough to break his helmet? Those must be some insanely powerful blasts. No! Bilgax. Oh, always so intimidating looking. Ben. Come on, you can fly this thing! You know, this would probably be a good time to turn it to upgrade, as it would not only save them, but probably provide them safe travels to Azimuth's lab through Xenon. And wow, Ben's eyes disappear completely for a frame. Pluto sacrificed himself to save me, something you wouldn't understand. What about the time he sacrificed himself for you in Season 1? You are them! How noble. Or the time he sacrificed himself for you in Season 2. Drop the weapon and I'll meld with you. Better hope your cousin knows how to fly. Twice. Let her go and you can have the stupid Omnitrix. That sacrifice you made for me was pretty impressive. I'm just saying. <laughs> Xenon's a pretty neat looking area. Kind of looks like a bunch of dough was halfway pressed through a cookie cutter. died trying to save me. Wow, they're all jumping to the conclusion he's dead. Surely Tetrax has been on enough missions with him to know that Gluto would survive. That Everyone gets a hoverboard. <laughs> so this looks pretty neat until you see a few of the dots at the bottom actually appear on top of something. Like this stick here and this rock here. Ruins the illusion just a little bit, but this shot is only like two seconds. Look how long these seeds are. They're borderline spikes. Wildfires! I love the look of this gun too. Everything in this movie, I just, I can't get over it. It's right up my alley in terms of visual spectacle. Now are these stripes or scars? They're a bit uniform to be scars, but some of them do seem a little more random. There we go. Now you're finally making some shields. Yes. So he can form crystals straight through his armor and doesn't even need to peel it back? That's pretty useful. This has got to be like a very malleable armor. Stand, look out! Self-destruct will accelerate! I don't care! Yeah, you know what? It is the same shapes used every single time. I thought that it was this way, but I was never sure. But this pretty much confirms it. It's even like that in the show, too. So I'm wondering if this animation was cropped to be widescreen, or if it was animated this way and cropped to be 4-3 at first. I'm coming! No! I've got to save her! It should have been me! See, there's that shape again. It's always the same effect. It should have been me. Oh, look at this thing. 
wondering how I'm gonna tell Grandpa about. This film does do a decent job trying to convince you that Gwen's dead. Maybe if this aired at the end of the series? I don't know, back then they didn't really kill off main characters like this, so maybe nowadays it'd be more believable. Can you imagine if they went through with it? I'm not sure I would like that, like Gwen's one of my favorite characters, but man, what a twist that would be if they really did kill Gwen right here. I know what you're going through. I was young. More Petro Sapiens. I like this sleeker outfit he has going on. This one straight up looks like Gwen's version of Diamond Head. Maybe it's the exact same model. So it made sense that I wound up a mercenary. Charcoal, that's another new texture. Always switching it up how we do these comic still images in the show. I was loyal to whoever paid me the most. I would work for the worst of the worst. Vilgax. Oh, this is such a good pose. I'd have a whole poster of this if I could. I stole the last piece of the puzzle Vilgax needed to invade my home world. That's pretty sus. Oh, look at this little one just wearing a t-shirt. That's so cute. I like how their world isn't covered in crystals. Like, I really like this design. I mean, Earth isn't covered in skin, so I would have loved to see more of this Patropia. He destroyed the entire planet to make an example. Vilgax did the dirty work, but he couldn't have done it without my help. Yeah, Tetrax was such a wasted character. I was just thinking about if you swapped him out for Labrid and Alien Force, what would that do? But Labrid's death is one of the key things that motivates Kevin to turn good, so I don't know, just, you know, Tetrax should have had more appearances. <laughs> And it's kind of implied that Petropia is only crystal-like on the surface, because when it explodes, you can see all these other minerals come out from underneath. This is all my fault. I saw that the watch was acting all weird at the reactor, but I used it anyway. I mean, if you didn't, Animo was going to set off a DNA bomb that would change the world, so... I like that Ben is starting to take responsibilities for his actions, but that one right there really was not his fault. That was Animo. I must have somehow set off the self-destruct. Gwen's dead because of me! Well, again, like, what would have they done if they didn't try to stop Animo? I suppose Gwen and Max maybe could have handled it themselves, but, you know, we saw how that went. I don't know, like, this is supposed to be the moment that Ben's supposed to have his turnaround in the movie, but, like, the self-destruct really wasn't his fault. I guess this is what you get for constantly trying to do the same character arc for Ben over and over again. You just run it into the ground. If we don't find Asma, Gwen, Gudo, and all the others will have lost their lives for nothing. I'm not going to let that happen, right? But it's a good moment. Okay, this does kind of speak to Azmuth's ego subtly. So with the infinite extra trivia that you never actually get in the show, this suit design was based off of the machine gods that the Galvins used to worship. So to make yourself wear a god machine and then project it holographically in front of people, it is kind of a bit theatrical. You know, for someone that hates people and holds himself up in the ground, he's really putting on a show here. I wound up with the Omnitrix. Now it's in self-destruct countdown and- I know. I invented it. So these lines right here don't really seem like a texture, but like actual lines that they just lay over this animation. It's kind of hard to tell, but when it moves, it sort of looks like something's in front of it, right? I understand completely. Is that still Robert David Hall doing the suit voice? Or do they have somebody else doing it? My cousin sacrificed her life to stop this thing! It's none of my concern. I really love how the Omnitrix looks right here. I wish it looked like this for the whole movie. But I'm not a huge fan of this shade of green. This is a bit too bluish green than limish green for Ben. What if we just, uh... There we go. I've come too far! I've lost too much to be stopped now! Rage mode, man. Wow, so he burst through those three walls with barely any wind-up. And forearms couldn't break through a pothole with multiple upon multiple punches. This does kind of play into Cannibolt being stronger than forearms, though, as Cannibolt was able to destroy the big tick back when forearms couldn't either. Not to mention that Cannibolt can survive the heat of re-entry, so never fuck with Cannibolt. <laughs> And with a Petro Sapien and an Arborian Pelorota in the same room, we got Diamond Bolt. You think you're a hero, but you're a fool. God, is that Robert David Hall? One hit. Get what you did. Okay, so since that's definitely Hall, when we compare the voices... You think you're a hero, but you're a fool. Do you know how long it takes to break in a bio suit like that? I don't know, it could be, but it's hard to tell. He's really a gray matter? Who knew? I mean, she would, right? Unless she doesn't know what he means by gray matter. I didn't create a weapon. All of you did. Created the ultimate device for understanding all the beings of the universe. You know, this music is very unfitting. This could be such a different moment. You and Vilgax are no different. That's not true! I felt like some cartoons back in the day were afraid to get too serious, so even if they had a serious moment, they would undermine it with like some goofy or lighthearted music, so you can't really get that emotional investment. I can't prove it, but that's just a theory I've had. What happens when the best you can do just isn't enough? 
There are guys out there that are better for you than Eric. This whole business about Danny being the ghost boy has got me just as confused and baffled as you. And this definitely seems like one of those times. Just let the moment play out as it should. We don't need this quirky video game OST music going on right here. That's not true! Sure, I've messed around with the watch and not just be a selfish jerk. Now see, that dramatic string came out of nowhere that even though it was supposed to help the moment, it just kind of seemed goofy. The classic series has a really good score, but sometimes during these more serious moments, it does miss the mark. I think without the helmet, 6-6 six, six is much more, what would you call it, rabid or vicious? Like, why is he on a leash right now? It's it's cool, I kind of dig it, but this, I don't know, maybe it's Vilgax's kink? No shame to that, I mean, people are into whatever they're into. And he's got this whole platform, too, you know, with all this drones and technology at his disposal. I'm sure jet boots aren't out of the question. Give yourself some flight, Vilgi. <laughs> Ah, one of the robots from the very first episode. Aside from the alternate timeline in Gwen 10, we haven't seen these since the first episode, right? Also, if these things are just gonna hold the same kind of gun that the smaller ones do, then what's the point of the big mechs anyways? I guess durability, but you'd think they'd at least have a different weapon. Well, look at the size of this. Where was this during Incarsicon? Use it now and we kiss this half of the universe bye-bye! At least he's got a handgun. Why do you continue to when it's hopeless? That's because the only thing you think about is yourself. See, that line would mean so much more if we knew Ben learned that through the experience of the first four seasons and not something he supposedly just learned in this movie. Like, for the context of the movie, sure, it's better narratively, but as fans of the show, we've seen Ben learn to care about others so many times, and this movie is made for fans of the show. You don't care about anyone else but yourself. You talking about me? I'm talking about me! So it kind of just feels like empty dialogue at this point. Now step up! I've got a world to see! I'm just kidding. Can you imagine though? Like look, he gets absolutely covered. There's no way he's surviving that. Okay, these things are new too. Vilgax has got a whole new army. <laughs> And an epic return. Yeah, maybe if they tried to fake her death a little earlier in the movie, like during the Incarsicon scene, that would have let this weigh in a little bit more, because like she just fake died. Pluto saved me from the wild vines and regenerate from just the smallest of parts. Did he go back to the ship for his suit first though? Or can that regenerate too? Who knew? Man, what's Vilgax doing up there? Man, it's a good thing none of them are shooting at Gluto. They're all just kind of sitting here. Maybe Vilgax needs to actually control them? No, because they have AIs and stuff. They talk. Now here we both got painted smoke. That's a single image panning across the background and animated smoke, but they actually blend together pretty well. Normally one of them sticks out more than the other. I think it's because they don't use a lot of strong blacks or whites. It's a lot of just mid-tone colors, whereas Tetrax and 6-6 Six Six with a lot of strong contrasting colors, especially the blacks, divert your eyes away from everything else. <laughs> This thing's pretty neat looking. These things kind of look like Transformers. I wonder if their display is updated. Yeah, it has. I know it's not the same machine, but both the giant robots and the drones share the same interface, so I was wondering if these things did too. Oh snap. In fact, now that I look at this, it looks like this whole robot was something entirely different that Vilgax took command of just by taking the head of one of his bots and shoving it on there. Probably came with a new ship, as a lot of these other things did. I would totally get a poster of this too. If only I could find a frame where it's not shaking too much. Right here. I think this is the only frame you can get a real good look at it. Everything else is a bit too shaky. And it's real interesting they didn't make this green. Probably because it's the self-destruct energy and they want you to know it's different, but normally everything Ben Tennyson is green just for the sake of it. <laughs> Oh wow, this was a specially drawn still too. I didn't really notice until I saw how much detail Gwen had. Wow, the whole island. It was just like an EMP, I guess. What you get for working with robots, Vilgax? I'm still not sure the universe is worth saving. Well, I think about it. He took the whole dial off. Oh yes, the army. The watch is deactivated. It's useless now. <laughs> and it's suddenly everything Vilgax has worked for is gone. But the creator of the Omnitrix is not. Smart thinking. Gotta admire the ambition. You don't need that thing. You are a hero. Even if you can't go hero. That's probably one of my favorite little speeches in the whole franchise. Because it really says a lot about the capability of Ben. And the fact that it's coming from Gwen too. I don't know. Something about that scene. It, it always sticks with me. I thought you pulled the plug on this thing. Who told you that? Here. Try this alien. Oh, I love that Azmuth gave him this alien too. You know, this aired so long ago, I forgot if they spoiled this in the previews or not. Do you guys remember if they showed Waybig's debut before this movie aired? If they did, that's such a buzzkill, because this is such a great moment. 
but of course there's that shape again. I really like when they draw the shadows crawling up the characters and it's shaped to his form. It's not just like a sheet of darkness overlaying the character. There he is. He is gigantic. One of those robots barely even comes up to his knees. Whoa, check me out. And his voice is booming and echoes throughout this whole area. I'm way big. So for those that don't know, these are actually eyes on Waybig. It's been confirmed by Tom Perkins. I think it's because he's so large that if you think about it, it would be useful to have eyes pointing down so you could always see where you're stepping. So he can see in front of him and below him at the same time with his two pairs of eyes. I think that's a really good design choice and it's upsetting that they got rid of it in UAF. So I didn't know a lot about Tokusatu growing up, so Way Big was a pure first experience for me. I wasn't able to make the Ultraman comparison. But this part is a little upsetting. Just cause right here you can see Way Big holding Vilgax and he's about the size of like an action figure on his hand. But earlier we see him holding a robot that's about the exact same proportion. And Vilgax is incredibly small compared to those robots. So either Way Big shrunk or Vilgax grew, but either way this subtle little size inconsistency is something that really stuck out to me. And I can't help but see it every single time I watch this movie. Pretty big talk from such a little guy. And you know what? This is the first time that Ben isn't looking up to Vilgax. Because Vilgax has always been taller than all of his aliens. Even forearms, I'm pretty sure. Wait, Vilgax is drawn with spikes? Has that been going on this whole movie? Alright, yeah, you can see it back here. And over here. Wow, I guess I just didn't notice. Because normally they're flat, right? Say it with me now. When in doubt... Throw them into space. I think these are all other little planets you can see in the background. I love how Azmuth turned the head of one of these into a ship. Improvising a ride. This place is getting too noisy for me. All of his technology, he's just gonna leave all that behind? I created the Omnitrix to help all the beings of the universe grow closer together. So how do you guys feel about that explanation? I think it's sweet, but at the same time, it also kind of doesn't make sense if there's only one of them. Maybe it was supposed to be given to someone to be an example of someone who is all of the different species coming together in harmony, which is what Ben eventually grows into. Sort of a living symbol for unity. You are one of us. I am one of everybody. There's also kind of a lot of holes with that too. This is why I kind of like the Alien Force explanation where it was built as a backup drive by any species wiped out by the hybrid. I mean, that of course has its own holes and everything in it too, but I guess just... The idea of creating the Omnitrix is such a crazy thing to think about, especially with all of its additional features. Any motivation behind it is slightly unsatisfactory, but perhaps we'll just never understand because we're not the smartest being in five galaxies. Besides, that thing is nothing but trouble. You keep it good riddance. <laughs> that always gets me. You coming? Oh man, see, Myax could have shown up a lot too in Alien Force. Tetrax and Myax and Gluto, they all just get wasted. But you know, it's great that we at least have them in this movie. Like, we can at least say that. So for these flaps right here, her little chin dot is left behind and she lifts her mouth until she turns her head and it's back to normal. You have to tell me how to work this thing. Don't you want to figure it out on your own? Not really. He still doesn't tell him. For the ride and the cool gift. Ah, uh, he gets a new hoverboard. He should have given Gwen one too. Why not? He has at least like 10 of them and Emergency another report. news broadcast. Zombies are attacking the mall. Zombies. Now that would have been neat to see. We did our own take on Ben 10 zombies in our Anura and Beyond if you want to check that out. This is the best summer Ever. It's hero time! Hey, a hero time! Finally! Holy shit! Bring that counter up to six! And look at Max with seemingly nothing, even though he has like an infinite plumber arsenal. I love this end credit scene where we get to see a lot of production art. Here's a nice little storyboard. And everyone's here Alex Soto, Donna Smith. We got Pugsley and Klein as the story editors. There's Tommy P. It looks like Dave Johnson worked on the movie too. It might just be because his designs were used, but I'm pretty sure he left at the end of season two. And look, even though it's not the same version, we have I guy credited here. So that must mean Accelerate's credited here too, right? Yep, right here. Oh, the person who played Myax was also the salesperson. But yeah, it doesn't say if somebody else voiced Azimuth's suit, so I guess it was Robert David Hall. Audio Circus, they do a lot of great work. There's that awesome Vilgax poster I would like to have. So with that, the season finale movie of Ben 10 has finally been reviewed. Even though it's technically not the season finale. Well, it's like written to be, but it aired before the show ended. And then it had its own episode that aired as its own series finale, which technically it was just a what-if story. And then of course there's Race Against Time, which is non-canon. Would Destroy All Aliens count as the series finale, technically? I don't know. Either way, Secret of the Omnitrix. Let's break into it. The plot, I'm going to give it a five. It's a simple and streamlined plot that's able to carry the characters all the way through the 
whole journey. It really delves headfirst into the mystery of the Omnitrix, and for the first time, we get to see a little bit more of its backstory and its creation. It introduces the characters Myax and Gluto, which play fantastically into the plot line. Tetrax, of course, makes a return. And if you watch this movie, you'd probably think he was more significant of a character than he actually was in the show. But I guess that's just a testament to how good of a character he is. And of course, the final showdown between Ben and Vilgax was ever awaited throughout the whole series. And finishing it off with Waybig is probably the best way it could have ended. Ben gaining a form that's so undeniably powerful, gifted to him from the creator of the Omnitrix after changing his viewpoints on the entire universe through his own lessons and struggles through his journey. While you could nitpick things a little bit further, there's nothing that stands out and takes you out of the movie. I feel like the story is very well written, well paced, and flows together naturally. And the payoff at the end of this movie, not just because of what the movie set up, but what the entire series set up, feels so grand in scale in the world of Ben 10. The characterization can also get another 5. All the characters were well written and well rounded with their own motivations and personalities. I do personally feel like it sucked that Max got left behind in this story, but he really wouldn't have been able to fit in with everything that happens. And changing all of the story just for his involvement, I get how this really should just be about Ben and Gwen. But at the sacrifice of Grandpa Max, we have great development for Myax, Tetrax, and Vilgax. And the classic series expands its space lore further by showing us in Karsakon and all of the different characters there, which has some of the most diverse character designs in the whole series. Even in Alien Force, Ultimate Alien, and Omniverse, while they do have some great background characters as well, they still seem kind of uniform with each other. The wide range of characters shown on Incarsicon is so vast that if shown out of context, you'd never guess they'd be from Ben 10, but they still don't look super out of place. Now, the character point of Ben, already of having learned his lesson many a time through about caring for others and not being selfish, normally that would weigh down on the characterization a little bit, but because this is a movie and it's supposed to be contextually enjoyed even if you don't watch the series, that's just how these movies are written, it's excusable because it wasn't overbearing. It didn't really make Ben an unappealing character, and when he comes around to learning his lesson, he's able to take it a step further and share his experience with Azmuth, who then changes Azmuth in return. So I wouldn't say it's such a cut and dry rinse and repeat as the series has done a few times before, and unfortunately will continue to do from here. Visuals, solid five, no argument there. Especially with it being a movie, the animation is top notch. And of course, as I was talking about the coloring a lot, there's so much attention to detail with the coloring in this movie, it's phenomenal. I've already touched on the character design, and the way things are drawn too. Everything is drawn a little bit more angular, but it's always so on model, it looks crisp and intriguing. Importance, it does get a solid five, and I think it might be the only movie to do so. We'll see when I review the other ones. Because this one isn't just a special movie, this one also ties up a lot of what the Ben 10 series has set up. And many things that happen here play a huge part in the series going forward, such as Ben unlocking way big, Ben throwing Vilgax into space, the existence of Azmuth as the creator of the Omnitrix, who becomes a supporting character throughout the remainder of the series, like that's refreshing, and the self-destruct countdown, of course, that plays a major role into the season finale of Alien Force. You know, despite it being a movie, it is just an extended episode of Ben 10. In fact, it was written as a three-part episode finale of the series, and Cartoon Network asked them to rework it into a movie, and I do think that was definitely worth it. Like, with the production that went into this movie, yeah, this is absolutely best as a movie. And entertaining, without repeating my earlier points, it gets a five. It's just an all-around great experience for Ben 10 fans. It's beautiful, it's unskippable, it's exciting, it's interesting, and despite it being a pseudo-series finale for the show, I think this movie would also be a good jumping off point into the Ben 10 franchise as a whole. The classic series is more or less episodic, so aside from key points, you can still relatively see it in any order. And of course, after this movie, there's still three whole series that still take place in the same continuity, so if you're trying to get someone into Ben 10 and they're not super worried about spoilers, show them this movie. This will definitely do the job, or at least make them sure of whether or not they'd be into the show. But that leaves this movie at a perfect score of 25 out of 25. Now let's wrap things up. That's about it for this video. No roadmap or poll this time because these movie breakdowns are in a different category, but I will resume watching through the last season of Classic, then tackle the rest of the movies, and then finally get to Alien Force. Until then, you can stay up to date with everything that I do on my social medias and join the Discord for some community interaction. You can also join the Patreon for $1 a month for exclusive weekly updates on everything we do, such as five years later in and beyond. I hope you have a fantastic start to your week, and until next time, keep it fizzy.